This question looks crazy, but it's not so bad. There is a Desmos solution I will show you at the end, but I don't think we really need to do it here. My brain sees what it sees on any question that I can is plug points into equations, right? These are two equations of lines. I have a bunch of points, they're messy points, but I could plug them in and I could plug them in just as is. It's not the end of the world to use the R, but notice the question. It says for each real number R, which of the following points lies on the graph of each equation in the XY plane for the given system? Well, that's basically the SAT's way of saying arithmetize, make up a number for R, okay? So whenever we have points, uh, we can plug them in, but if the point is messy like this, maybe we can make up a number to, to get rid of one of the variables, and zero is a real number. So let's see what happens if we make it zero. Then these points become much simpler, right? This one, the zero is gonna knock this whole piece out here. So we're gonna have seven and then 35, this one would be zero plus seven halves, so seven halves, uh, comma zero. This one is gonna be zero seven thirds, and this one is gonna be zero seven halves, right? Now, why am I able to do that so quickly? Because I can see how zero just knocks out anything with a zero, with an R in it, right? It's gonna multiply by zero, divide by a number, but it's zero, so it all kind of goes away. So the benefit of zero is it's easy to think about. Now we can just plug those points in. The, the, the other thing to notice is uh, these are both the same equation, right? If we took the top equation and multiplied everything by five, we would get the bottom equation. So there's no reason to do it in both. They're the same equation. I don't know why they did that. That, that doesn't add anything to the question. But let's just plug them in, right? So if we did uh, the top equation, since the numbers are smaller with choice A, that would be two times seven is 14 plus, I don't know what three times 35 is. It's big and that's not gonna equal seven. So it doesn't work. Here, if we did two times seven halves uh, plus three times zero equals seven, right? The twos are gonna cancel. This goes away because of the zero. So this gives me seven equals seven. So that seems good. Now I'm not gonna try the other equation because, well, like I said, it's, it's, you know, it's the same equation. So let's just try the other answer choices and see if any of them work as well. So this one would be zero seven thirds. So that's uh, two times zero. That's uh, I'll write it for you guys. Two times zero plus three times seven thirds equals seven. So unfortunately, that works too. That's okay. It still doesn't bother me too much. Let's look at the choice D. I know that's not gonna work. Two times zero plus three times seven halves. Well, this goes away, but this is gonna be 21 over two equals seven. It's not. So we at least got rid of two answer choices. So from here, we can do a couple things. We could try a new number. We could try a number like one or two. I can see the benefit of maybe even doing three if we look at choice C and we wanna make some of these fractions disappear. Um, but we can also maybe plug in the number, the value itself and it's not as scary anymore because in, in both cases, one of the values is easy, right? So in C, the X and in D in B, the Y are very easy coordinates. And you could have done this from the start and skipped the plug points into equations, uh, arithmetize thing, but you know, why not? It's nice. It's nice to see and, and see how it works. So let's try choice B in the top equation, right? So I'm not going to plug in X. I'm going to leave X as X because X is this giant mess, but the R is going to be the Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for R or for X rather, and see if that X gives me this thing here and see if it's the same. So let's uh, subtract three R from both sides, right? So that's two X. Uh, is equal to, and I'm gonna keep it as negative three R plus seven because it kind of looks like that on the on the choice. And if we divide by two, right, we could divide by two on both parts and we would get X is equal to negative three R over two plus seven halves. Well, that's that seems to be what it is. That seems good. Let's try choice C, but this time I'm gonna plug in R for X and I'm gonna try to solve for Y because that's the more crazy thing there. So that's gonna be two R plus three Y is equal to seven. Here, we're gonna subtract two R, subtract two R. Let's do the same thing here. We get three Y, try to mimic what I see there, ne uh, equals negative two R plus seven, divide by three, divide by three, divide by three. And you can see this is not quite the same, right? It's close, but it's missing a negative, right? It's not, it's negative two R we found, it's positive two R that they found. So that is now proof that B is right. And that is the answer. So again, we could have picked another value for R and tried one, and especially with the calculator, you know, a lot of these fractions just become decimals. And 
write them down, store them in the calculator. If you've got a nicer calculator than me, it might show multiple lines. So there's lots of ways we could have just dealt with the R as a new number and still solved it the same way I, I started originally. There is one other solution. I don't recommend it uh, unless you're really stuck because it's kind of time consuming to type things, but I don't know, this was kind of time consuming too. So I don't know, pick your poison, I guess. So what did I do here? Well, I typed in both equations and right away we can see that the equations are the same, like I said, right? The red and the blue are the exact same thing. I also typed in all of the points and because all of the points include this R, Desmos is like, what, what do you mean? What is this R? Give me, I don't know what that means. So what they did is they I, they offered me to make a slider. And so I, I made the slider and R just defaulted to one. Uh, so now we can see what happens if we had uh, arithmetized with R equals one. We would see that only this red point is on the line, right? The green point is off, right? So uh, the green point is um, choice D. The blue point is off. That's choice C. That's the one we thought about. And where's the purple point? Well, the purple point is all the way, oop, all the way out there. It's not even close. And if I adjust the R, right, look at these little, these little dots. They dance. They dance. But only the red, only choice B is dancing along the line. And that's basically what we're looking for. So all of the others, maybe at one point, they intersect the line. But we need to intersect at all points. And that's what Desmos is letting us see is that at most points, these dots are not on the line. Um, and we just happened when R is equal to zero, we can probably see it actually. When R is equal to zero, we happen to have a situation where two points are on the line, right? Look, the red and the blue, choices B and C. So that happens. That doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't mind when my arithmetize of zero leads me to two answer choices. I just, I, now I can do something different and figure out what's different between them. But at least I got rid of two answer choices pretty easily. So, you know, that's a good sign. So uh, give me a comment. What do you think? What do you think is the best solution here? How would you get this if you saw this question on a test? You know, uh, would you arithmetize? Would you just plug points in with the R's from the start? Would you go to Desmos? Uh, you know, there's a reason I typed this all before the video started. It took a long time. It's a pain. And you got to be really perfect because if you mess it up, you might get the wrong answer because now you're not looking at the right points. But I'm curious what you think. How would you solve this?